a crackdown on Islam is spreading across China. Um, and and it, this, this, to me, is misleading because it's not Islam. It's actually a lot of Muslims that yes, are being hurt. Yes, thank you. I, that, you stole my line. I was going to be like, this, t- <laughs> this headline is completely wrong. It's not a crackdown on Islam. We do a crackdown on Islam. China right. does a crackdown on Muslims. Yes. But go on. Yes. So um, a lot of people don't know that in China's northwest, um, it's actually, it's, it's predominantly a Muslim area. So like uh, in the small village of Linxia, um, is a city known as Little Mecca. Um, the government is going up there and just stripping all expressions of Islamic faith. Uh, they are burning down resident homes, um, domes and mosques. They are um, fighting with these people, with these Muslims, um, trying to smash everything that it is they believe in trying to take them into their camps um, to have them brainwashed uh, or, or as they say, like anti-brainwashed from Islam and into uh, China's way of living. So um, they have actually gone as far as to, they, they've banned the public use of Arabic script in China. Mm. Um, and it's just, it's a harsh crackdown on Muslims that is going even further than the concentration camps they already have set up. You know, what I think is if people look back at today, 50 years from now, right? What are they going to mostly talk about? And a lot of people, based on what the news is covering these days, they might talk about, I don't know, Trump, Ukraine. Um, but it's, I think it's going to be this. It's going to be... The fact that human rights violations became something that people were not as sensitive about as they used to be. Uh, after World War II, when we said never again and all that stuff, and we had a lot of, and you know, we had some major, we went through a lot of major human rights wins. We had like Martin Luther King, uh, we had, I don't know, uh, Gandhi, we had Mandela, and I mean, I understand some of them were flawed, but overall, there was a push for against authoritarian ideologies and for human rights, and people were like, human rights, yeah, yeah, um, and then human rights it, narratives were misused, and people lost hope, and now we have concentration camps coming back up, right? We have concentration camps uh, that people around the world don't seem to give a shit about, including many, many Muslims, again, hashtag not all, it's Muslims mostly care about if Israel or white people are attacking Muslims, they're not, they, you know, Pakistan and Saudi Arabia are buddy buddies with China and they have given them a green light, yeah, do this to Muslims, we don't care. Uh, they even have praised China's, um, meth- uh, you know, authoritarian methods against their fellow Muslims because, yeah, why not? Uh, I think it's going to be the Kashmir situation that 50 years from now people are going to look back on and look at it and be like, yep, these people, people at our time uh, gave up on human rights because nobody seemed to, you know, we're not as sensitive to it as we used to be. It was just a short time. The shock of World War II, I think, made people care about it for a while. And now it's not, it's not, it's not, you know, I mean, we have concentration camps back. I mean, come on. One million Muslims in China. We didn't think we we're going to be back here. We're here, and nobody, people are not talking about it. Uh, we, the Yemen situation, which is the greatest human, uh, humanitarian crisis of our time, most people don't care about that. I mean, this is the stuff I think that people are going to look back in shame and be like, yeah, people, they said never forget, and they forgot. They we forgot. better. We better look back at this in shame. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This is this is disgusting. And then again, uh, it's, it, it surprises people that we are talk. You know, we're atheists, and China is an atheist regime, and fuck them. And uh, you know, we'll take the side of Muslims on this one. Fuck China. Uh, fuck the way that they're treating Muslims, and fuck anybody that pretends to be for human rights but has other agendas. See, this is what this is how you stand. We we we're not tribal, right? When it comes to violation of human rights, we'll take the side of Muslims against the atheists. But if you look at, um, you know, leftists, right wingers, uh, Muslims, 
it, when they when they cry about human rights, it's always their people, or their, the people that they have identified as victims. If it falls out of their narrative, they don't care about people, right? Where all you know, if 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 a, if a fraction of this crime was ha done by Israel, the number of Muslims in the world that would be talking about it would be astronomically higher. If it was the United States, or if it was any other white country, they would be it would they would be shouting it off the rooftops, right? Because they're tribal, they have identified the enemy. And they don't recognize China as a traditional enemy. I hope they will. I know some of them do. But because it's, a, it's not about saving people. It's not about the victims. It's about, it's about the tribe you belong to and the narratives that you have to stick by to, to belong to that tribe. Hey. Let yeah. Me, let me see what the top comment is. Thomas is saying the amount of gleeful responses here is genuinely unsettling. Yeah, I predicted that because people, again, just because, you know, um, we try to make Atheist Republic less tribal, but many many of our followers on Atheist Republic are not like that. Many of our followers on Atheist Republic, people that, uh, that feel like they belong to Atheist Republic, will celebrate China. And we don't ban them, and we, we want them to come here and say these things so we could highlight them. Because guess what? You don't fix these problems by you know, not talking about it, by not shining a light on it. Again, this is another thing that uh, many other organizations or even religious groups do, right? W you know, not that many atheist organizations will, or, or groups will say, like, look, this is a problem that we have in our community. Not just the atheist community, our own atheist republic community. We have a problem. A lot of people within our own atheist republic community support China on this. And we're going to shine a light on it. I'm going to highlight it as a problem that we need to address. Um, you know, a lot of people in the Muslim community, they don't address the fact that their religion is responsible for a lot of hate. So we, do, we, should, we shouldn't follow that. We should point out and we shouldn't shy away from the fact that China is an atheist state. Don't let people try to like dance around that and be like, well, no, technically this is authoritarian and they're worshiping, you know, something else. No, they don't believe in God. So they're atheists. It's an atheist state. It's an atheist regime. Own it. Right. Don't don't. Yeah, I understand that their atheism is not responsible for what they're doing. But if anybody wants to point out that they are atheists, that is fair. That is a fair point. They are atheists. If somebody says that atheism led to this, that is not fair. But don't shy away from the fact that they are actually atheists. Yeah. S Soraya is saying 50th. Wait, what is that? Do you want to read Soraya's comment? I don't know what you... Let me, uh, uh, where they say about the, the 50th day of Kashmir lockdown. Oh, yeah. Our government has gone mad. Oh yeah, in India, yes, other human rights violations. We'll, we'll cover that. We we need to. By the way, I'm actually surprised that we haven't been posting about that more. Um, tell Anna that ca the Kashmir situation needs to be covered more, especially given that how sensitive people are about us talking about this, and a lot of people want us not to talk about this. A lot of our so-called Hindu atheist followers don't want us to talk about it, and they will accuse us of posting fake news and all that. That's why we should talk about it more. So Actually, this would be great. Uh, this would be a great topic for me to cover for you. For those of you who don't know, yes. I write for, for Patheos. Um, so if anyone living in that area wants to contact me on Twitter um, and give me some statements, I would really appreciate it. Okay, here's another comment. Uh, Sean is saying, I actually had a discussion about this on another page. I may not agree with the concentration cap methods, but got them if it hasn't been effective. Really, Sean, you think it has been effective? You think this Really? Is wow. Okay, how is this has been effective in China? You, you replace Islam with another authoritarian mindset. Like, if I kill a monster and bring a monster to, as horrific to replace it, am I, have I done anything? Like, what do you guys... Like, just because the, you're, you're defeating Islam, that doesn't mean this is a good thing. You're replacing it with something even worse. There you go. I don't know. I don't know. I want to talk to these people. See what? Why would they say stuff like this? Right. Look, Thomas, in our top comment. Good. This bullshit needs to be stopped everywhere. Good luck stopping it with this method. China, if you if you 
if anybody in the Chinese government ever watches our shows, which I'm sure they don't, um, hire Atheist Republic. We'll, t we'll show you how to defeat Islam. Somebody, please, yeah. somebody come. Uh, I, I don't know. If I, if I go to China, would they arrest me and send me to Iran? Because I would like <laughs> to go there and do presentations on how to actually defeat Islam. We have done a very good job at Atheist Republic with very, very limited resources. Uh, to to get hundreds of thousands of people out out of Islam, okay? Yeah. So with very very limited resources. So imagine if we had the resources, right? So China, if you want to defeat Islam, hire us. We'll show you how to do it more effectively and humanely. Um, yeah, but I don't. I, I would love to go to China and do like some uh, seminars there and try to get some people change some minds about how to do this. But I'm scared. Because China is buddy buddies with Iran now, and if they arrest me, and if they want, to, I'm okay to get deported, but deport me to Canada. But they might decide that if they want to deport me to Iran, because I'm dual citizen, right? So that's yeah. That, they would be like, yeah, why we could we, they get to choose where they want to deport me to? So that if I go back to Iran, they'll hang me. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.